Well, good morning to you. Welcome, 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 welcome to the Lord's house. And we thank God for a beautiful day. Amen. I was talking to the Sunday school class, and when we come to the conclusion of it, I said, you know, the number one thing that is good about all that we're living in here now, God still sits on the throne. Amen. Amen. No matter what happens in this world, just remember that God still sits on the throne. God's in control, and God's word is true. And because we depend upon his word and his uh, son in dwells and says amen, it takes us from this life to the one to come. And what a great blessing in knowing that and what a great truth that is. It is good to see each and every one in the Lord's house now. I'm glad that we have this opportunity and everything. This is Memorial Day. Uh, we're uh, coming together to kind of remember a few things. Remember those that have given their life or uh, that have made the sacrifices. Those that have uh, ultimately... Uh, done uh, what was necessary for the freedoms of this uh, country. And we thank God for that. And uh, we thank God for those that have come before us. Many of us in here today uh, have had uh, loved ones that uh, have went to the battlefield. And uh, we're thankful for uh, their sacrifice. And we don't want to overlook that or gloss over that or anything. But also we like to remember those that came before us and the sacrifices they made in our lives, such as uh, you, you maybe had a grandma. You know, that's why we go to the graveyards and we do the decorations and such as that. At least some people still do. And uh, pay tribute to that. And uh, we uh, uh, went to with my family the other day over to the graveyard. And uh, as I remember, as we were standing there looking at Grandma and Grandpa buried there in the ground. I remember looking at my uncle's uh, grave. I remember going over to my great-grandmother and great-grandpa. And we were looking at their grave and, and all. And you just kind of reflect and remember and reminisce. And, and uh, what we've been given, brothers and sisters, is a great blessing. I understand in the, the term on the distortion of what we're living in today. I get that. But that ought to never overshadow what that, what that great flag over there represents. So if you would stand with me today, if you would, before we even read a scripture, if you would stand. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. While y'all are still standing, if you will, there's another one that we need to remember today because he also laid his life down for us, and that is the Christian flag. If you will, attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands. One Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again. Life and liberty. Amen. Now there's one other pledge I'd like to make this morning. If you got your Bibles with you, I uh, would that you would stand there and put your hand on your Bible or put your hand over your heart if you, if you don't. And that's the Word of God. We thank God for the Word because it does bring life. Amen. Attention. Salute. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy Word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. Amen. Y'all may be seated this morning. I appreciate you doing that. I appreciate you uh, remembering with me today of why we have what we have and why we do what we do. You see, one thing about life, it's always important to never forget. Never forget what, preacher? Number one, never forget God. Never forget God. He is the creator of mankind. He is the one that has given us life. And because of that, we have the abilities to do and to say and to be what we are. He's given us the right to choose. Get God, but also don't forget where you came from. How many of us as uh, young boys and girls, as we grew up and we walked around doing the things that we do, how many of you look back and reminisce? Let me ask you this. Have y'all ever played a prank or played a trick on your brother or your sister with a rotatory phone, with a rotary phone? Oh, don't chalk. I did it many times. Amen. I'm here to tell you. I told my kids one day, I said, y'all never know what fun that is. Sure enough. I tell you, how many of y'all have ever uh, did prank calls? I actually got one on my phone right now. These two girls uh, a few years back tried to prank me on, uh, on this, tell me not to go to Burger King because the uh, pickles there are boogers. <laughs> I kept it. It's about a minute long. I called the girls up. I said, girls, thank you for sending that to me. And, uh, you know, I don't know, they're probably about 10, 12 years old, something like that. I said, thank you for sending that to me. I said, in this day and age in which we're living in, I thought I'd never get pranked again. Sure enough, that was 
Now, don't y'all start pranking me this week. <laughs> I know what you kind of get started on a deal like that. But, you know, there's certain things we've lost, certain things that have kind of fallen to the wayside. Like, you know, what side of the pickup truck do you sit on when Grandpa's in the front seat? You sit on the opposite side if he's chewing the back of the spitter. Say amen right there. <laughs> right? There's a lot of kids they thought for many years they had freckles, but they found out, no, they were just riding in the back of the pickup truck. <laughs> Come on now, amen. Right? Right? Y'all with me this morning? But now, you know, you tell me when's the last time you've seen, seen anybody riding in the back of a pickup truck. I remember taking trips and riding in the back window. Nowadays, if you ain't got a seatbelt, oh, oh, mercy sakes, if you ain't got a seatbelt, I, I took a lot of trips riding in that back window. Amen? Am I the only one? I see y'all nodding them heads up. Just say amen right there. Y'all with me today? That's something these young people will not know anything about. You know, I remember as nine, ten years old. Nowadays, they want to talk about the orientation of a person. I remember being nine, ten years old. I didn't know anything about any of that junk. All I knew is I'd like to get down to the creek down there and drown me a little worm so I can catch me a little fish. Amen. Amen. I remember as a, as a kid, I used to like my summers because we used to be able to go swimming. I, matter of fact, I remember a lot of times we'd come swimming over here at Woods Reservoir at the beach that they've dis done away with nowadays. How many of y'all remember swimming over at the beach over at Woods? Say amen. Sad truth, it ain't over no more. When I moved back here, I got excited because I thought, Brother Buck, I said, I said, man, I get to take my kids back over to the beach and go swim. It ain't over no more. I just live a mile away from that. Ain't no beach over no more. It's gone. It's gone. You say, well, preacher, well, won't you, why won't they bring it back? It's not coming back. It's gone. And as we're living in this day and age, in this time that things are progressing so rapidly and so fast, that sometimes it makes our heads spin. It's really important to have a Memorial Day. It's really important to have a time such as this that we can reflect and reminisce. We can mem remember Sunday afternoons going to grandma's and the family being there is a time of fellowship and celebration and everybody bringing the food in and I got news for you, Brother Danny. Oh, what food we had, say amen right there. I never remember a time going to my grandmother's or my great grandmother's. I remember a lot of times I go to my great grandmother. She lived up there in Holbrook's Cove. Some of y'all Tuning in, y'all, Hobart's Cove, what in the world is that? Some of y'all even sitting here probably don't know where Hobart's Cove is, even though it ain't too far from you. Where my great-grandmother's house there in Hobart's Cove, there at the foot of the mountain. And I'd walk in there and she'd say, oh boy, go on in there and get you some food. It's on the table. She said, I'm sorry I ain't got more. I wish I'd known y'all were coming. I'd fixed a whole lot more. And there's never been a time I ever walked into there where her whole table wasn't filled up with food. She had more than enough to feed Cox's army. If y'all know who Cox's army is, let me, uh, well, that's for another time. <laughs> and if she didn't have at least five desserts on the deep freeze out back, I'll eat this big one. I'm telling you. And she'd always say, Miss Jewel, she'd always say, I'm sorry, honey, I ain't got more. I'm like, Lord, mercy, it's Thanksgiving already. What are you talking about? Lord and mercy, that's the way it was. And now we're living in a day and an age where there's a lot of disconnection and a lot of people that don't even reflect upon where we came from. Matter of fact, you hear a lot of people attacking it that we need to discard it and not think about. And we need to look to what they're trying to create for our future now. I'll reiterate, don't forget God. He's the reason we all exist. And then number two, don't forget where you came from. That'll help to keep you focused on about where you're going. You see, that flag right there, it ain't changed. It still means the same thing that it always has. It stands for freedom, say amen right there. Amen. That flag right there, it ain't changed. It still stands for a resurrected, resurrected Savior, say amen. amen. And this word of God, it ain't changed. It still stands for the same foundation that we've always had, on which all things exist.
We need to remember these things because we're living in a day and an age and in a society that they want you to forget and focus your attention on the new things. And I got news for you. Their new things ain't going to pan out. Their new things ain't going to work out. What's going to be when all the dust is settled, this old word, and my Lord and Savior, that's what's going to be. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Troublesome days and trying times are ahead. But we'll go forward with a smile on our face as long as we keep focused on the things of God. Because he makes all the difference in the world. The Bible says, Psalms 106, or Psalms 98. Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, for he hath done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm hath gotten him the victory. Oh, it's time to sing, brothers and sisters. It's time to sing. Let's pray. Lord, I pray that you'll speak to the hearts here this morning. Lord, be in the message today. Be with each and every aspect of the service, both the song service and the preaching and all these things. Lord, let it be glorious and victorious. And Lord, let it be uplifting. Continue to help us, guide us, and direct us as we go forward. In Christ's name, amen. All right, brother John. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. We do want to remind you all, if you all are visitors here at Faith Baptist Church this morning, there's a little piece of paper that's right in front of you on the pew. Fill that out and give us a record on when you're here. And we'll try to be in touch with you. And we'll let you. If you've got any questions that you can ask us and let us know, we'll try to help you out with those. If you wouldn't stand with me, his name is wonderful. Amen. His name.
get ready. We'll get ready to receive an offering this morning. Kendra, thank you for that. I tell you, if you don't know how difficult it is to get up here in front of everybody, uh, you ought to try it yourself. <laughs> yeah. How nervous were you, Kendra? Amen. I tell you, thank God. Thank Amen. God. I, I appreciate courage. I, I, I really do. Amen. And all. What a, what a blessing. We thank God for that this morning. I do appreciate each and every one of you being here. And as uh, we move forward with things, you know, just celebrating what the Lord has done for us. Matter of fact, that's what this time of the service is about. Being able to give back to God is a testimony of what God's given to us. Amen. It's what it is. It's why the Lord says a, a God loves a cheerful giver. He, he, he wants you to be able to give back to him with the right kind of spirit, the right kind of attitude, because he's blessed you with so much, he wants you to be grateful. Amen. And that's what we ought to do. We ought to be grateful for what God's given to us. You know, I've always said it like this, you can't put it in the offering plate if God hadn't given it to you. But if God's given you something, you ought to give something back to him and glorify his name in that. And uh, what God does is he takes what we do put in there and he multiplies it. And he, he blesses it and allows us to be able to take uh, what uh, he's given us and then uh, take it throughout the world. Amen. And so we thank God for that privilege and honor to be able to do that. That's why we're still here. This is a lighthouse. It's a lighthouse. Uh, we're reaching out to a lost and dying world. And we thank God for that. Let me remind you a few things. Uh, next Sunday morning, kicking off at 530. Yes, 530. You heard me right. We're going to have a sunrise service. And uh, we'll kick it off at 530. And then afterwards, uh, after the sunrise service, we'll have breakfast. And uh, we'll be doing that, having a good breakfast that morning. And then uh, you said, well, what am I going to do between there and Sunday school? Well, I know some people, uh, especially those who are going to be cooking, they're going to go back to the house and get changed and then come back to Sunday school next Sunday morning. And then we'll have uh, Sunday morning service next Sunday morning. And we're going to celebrate Resurrection Amen. Sunday around here. Amen. Amen. Easter Sunday. I know, uh, you know, uh, back when all was being locked down and all like this and everybody, and I told you then that we were going to have uh, Easter service. Amen. And well, we're going to have it the 31st of May around here. Amen. And then the following Sunday is Mama's Day around here. I know we had Mama's Day just a few uh, weeks back and all like it, but, you know, because of the uh, lockdown and everything, you, you know, we've been kind of isolated. I told you, look, put it on your calendar. Every day is Resurrection Day with the Lord. Amen. Say amen right amen. there. And every day is Mama's Day. Say amen right there. Amen. amen. So it don't matter what time it falls on the calendar. It ought to be every day with God and every day with Mama. Say amen. amen. You see, because those are two great gifts that we have in our lives. And so thank God for that. And we'll do that. And then uh, in about a few weeks after that, we're going to have Daddy's Day around here. So dads, you're not getting kicked to the curb or anything. We're going to have Daddy's Day. But it's going to fall on the, on the regular time. Choir practice tonight. Choir and practice tonight. Yeah, and you're right. Wednesday night. And Wednesday night. See, uh, Brother John's trying to get ready for next Sunday, the big, big uh, return of the choir and all. And so then uh, we got that going on. And uh, anybody still wants to bring any candy? One, one second, Miss Sherry. If anybody wants to still bring any candy, we sure would love for uh, y'all to keep doing that because we have been stockpiling it. I have not been in there and stitched one piece. Contrary to rumor, I have not taken one piece. Hey, preacher's been working on getting up. Saving it right there. Amen. Going up. I had to get healthy, Brother Alex. Amen. I was in bad shape. Thank God. Matter of fact, they, they didn't sit there. You know, I've gotten charged up so much here the last few days and everything. I got some people talking about wanting to put a shop collar on me. I don't know if I like that or not. <laughs> they talked about that this morning. They said, well, preacher, you know, you're getting fired up and everything. We're going to put a shop collar on you and everything. I wonder about these kind of people. They're supposed to be my brothers and sisters in the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Miss Sherry has got to deal with uh, with the mama's uh, deal. You want to say it, Miss Sherry? <laughs> She's talking about the Mama's Day pictures. Yeah, and so I for those of you at home, if you can, like she said, you, if you can email them to her or message them to her somehow, text them. Uh, if you can get them to her any which way that you can. Uh, yes, ma'am. Or if you bring them. Uh, or bring them. Scan them and give them back to you the next Right. Time. For those of you that don't text or, or, or email or anything like that, if you just bring them up here, uh, we can scan them. We can run them off on our scanner back there, our printer back there. And scan them and then get them back to you. And then that way uh, it doesn't, we're, we're, we're not trying to keep your pictures or anything like that. We just, uh, we're wanting to do, because she's got a thing that she's setting up. And so if you will help us out with that. And she's trying to get that set up for next, uh, or well for Mama's Day. And so uh, 
all like that. Is there anything else that I'm, I'm missing out on this morning? All right, we got the candy. We got the service next Sunday morning, starting off at 5.30. Man, well, we got a lot of things going on. And we've got Masters Club that's being activated again. And, uh, it's been and, activated. and that's what I'm saying. We got that going again. And so we thank God for that. Buses. And uh, we got the buses going again. We thank God for that. And uh, yes, we do have one bus down. But here's the deal. It's in the, it's in the body shop or it's, it's down at the garage and we're getting it fixed. Amen. And so it'll be back on the road here pretty soon. So thank God for the opportunity. Thank God for what God's doing. And thank God that God still sits on the throne. Amen. And so in that, we just continue. For those of you tuning in at home, we're glad to have you with us. We're glad for this opportunity. This morning, Brother Alex, if you will, ask the blessing on the offering. Before we pray, uh, this year we celebrated the 75th anniversary of the end of World War II. Yeah. Also, little tidbit of information, a nation of over 300 million, there is less than 400,000 people alive today in America that remember the day World War II ended. Some of us are too young to remember it. Ask somebody, sit down, buy them a cup of coffee. Ask them what they was doing the day that World War II ended, what they remembered, and what a day of great joy that was in this country and throughout the world. Talk to these people because they're dying fast and pretty soon there'll be nobody to reflect back on that we can go to and get a true direct what happened that day when the last one passes away. Think about it, look somebody up, just see what they were doing the day that World War II ended. Now let us pray. Father, we thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us and thank you for the opportunity to come to your house to worship you, praise you, and thank you for the blessings that you've given us. Father, we do want you to remember each and every one of the soldiers that's fought and defended the freedom of this country more so, Father, we ask that we remember those that laid down and made the ultimate sacrifice and gave it their all for the freedom of this country and the world. And like you gave your all for our salvation, Father, and we thank you for that. And we thank you for each one of these lives that were sacrificed. Father, we do ask that you'll remember our prayer request that was brought up in Sunday school. Those that need a touch of grace from you that you can answer and meet their needs in your own special way. Father, as we take up the offering this morning, we ask that you make us good stewards. Use it in a way that we can get your gospel out to the world. And Father, just lead us and guide us and direct us. Be with Brother Shane as he brings the message this morning. Open our hearts and our ears to hear the message that he's going to give to us today. And we'll give you all the praise and thanks. For these things we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Hey, hey.
right, you youngsters. Welcome to the wall. We'll make sure y'all in the back. Y'all go ahead and head on out. Amen. If you got your Bibles with you this morning, go with me to Ephesians in chapter number 6. Ephesians in chapter number 6. We've been given a lot. The Bible says where much is given, much is required. God expects a lot out of us because he's given us so much. And that's something uh, that we all need to take very serious. Brother Alex is exactly correct about acknowledging World War II and the ending of it. And what a great event it was in this nation when it ended. Amen. Because it was good to have the, the folks home. It was good to have them home. One of the most moving events I ever witnessed and beheld was when I went to Arlington Cemetery. We were at the tomb of the unknown soldier. We were watching the laying of the wreath and uh, the changing of the guard, if you will. We was watching them go through the, the, the deal. And by the way, they do that rain or shine. Matter of fact, uh, there was uh, Hurricane Sandy, I believe it was, that was coming in and uh, they were told uh, that they could stand down. They said, no, sir. We will stand in our post. So when people were hunkering down in their homes and everything, those soldiers were still standing there over that tomb. The reason for that is because they understand the importance and the value to, rem uh, to remember, to acknowledge. Well, as we witnessed that day, and uh, they had school kids there, they had all sorts of different people visiting and seeing and watching like we were. But as I uh, stepped away from the uh, uh, place of uh, the stairs or the steps there where, where they have people where you can sit or stand and, and watch the uh, changing of the guard and I'm coming down off of that with Amy and, and the kids and as we're walking away from there I see a soldier sitting at the side. He's sitting there in his wheelchair. Brother Alex, he was a World War II veteran. He had all of his medals on his chest and he had his hat on and had all this and you cannot mistake who and what he was. And you cannot mistake uh, the pride that, that he must have had within him and the honor that he was showing that day. And as I began to witness and behold this man uh, as he was sitting there at attention with tears streaming down the side of his face. I was overcome, could not even imagine what this man had beheld, and what he experienced, and what that event actually meant to him, a man that probably stood on the front line somewhere or another. And I just stood there in awe. Well, I'm kind of like that with the Lord. I wasn't there that day, Brother John, when my Lord and Savior hung on that cross. I wasn't there when Jesus Christ gave his life for you and I. And I don't know to the extent or to the depth that God felt that day when he had to turn his back upon his son. And Jesus cried out and he said, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? One time in history, since the beginning all the way through, God and Christ had never been separated but that one time. And how difficult and how hard it was for God to turn his back upon his only begotten son. Because your sin and my sin was too great for God to look upon. But Jesus took it. He withheld it. And what a miraculous thing <laughs> that is. When I think about that soldier, I think about the tribute. I think about the honor. It had an impact on my life. I'll, I'll not lie to you. It meant a lot to me. I also went to, and I'd advise anybody to go to the uh, Holocaust Museum. 
in Washington, D.C. You'd be amazed what you might learn there. But I'd invite anybody to get into the Word of God and read and study and find out the depths that Jesus Christ went for mankind. And you might find how that will change your life. <coughs> you see, what we've been given is tremendous. But what God's asking us to do today seems very simple on the forefront of it. What God is asking us to do today is not that difficult. Matter of fact, the Bible says it's our reasonable service. Not hard or difficult, but what God is asking us to do is to simply stand. And you'd be amazed at what would happen if we as God's children, we as God's people, we as the church of God would just stand for the things of God. How lives can be changed. How souls can be saved. Just by standing. You see, here's the thing. Society is afraid of us. Society fears us. Because we bring light into the situation. We bring understanding to the table. We show mankind there is a difference. We show the world there is a better way. You see, it's not about man. It's about the man, Christ Jesus. See, man falls short. But God, his son, goes so much more than you can even imagine. That's what it's about. Women this morning in Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 10, say amen. amen. Good to have you. Verse number 10, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, look at it with me. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may, able, be, may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore. I'm going to ask you a question before we go any further. Do you think this is the evil day? You think mankind might have some evil thoughts about him? Do you think mankind might be trying to do harm to this nation? Do you think that might be going on? We're in the evil day, say amen right there. Amen. Read on. Having done all to stand, he says, stand there for, having your loins girded about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness. You know what a lie hates? Truth. You bring truth to the situation, it exposes them. Shows them for what they are. Your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto, watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Let's pray. I pray, Lord, to speak to the hearts here today, Lord, be in the message today as only you can, and help us, dear Lord, to reflect, to remember, to behold what's transpired before us and what we need to do in the days in which we live. We ask you in Christ's name, amen. amen. Verse number 10 again, look at it with me. The first thing I want you to notice, he says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. I know a lot of people are looking for strength today. A lot of people are looking for help today. A lot of people are, are wondering what is going on and happening in our society today. Uh, Preacher, uh, we're seeing this and we're seeing that. I get that. I understand. Remember old Peter. Peter was walking on the water as long as he looked to Jesus. But when Jesus said, Peter, come on out here. And he did. And Peter's walking on that water. But when Peter took his eyes off of Jesus, he began to sink. He began to sink. Because he put his eyes on other things of the world. And when we take our eyes off of the Lord, we begin to sink too. 
And now we're looking and wondering which end is up. We're wondering what's going on. And we're hearing this one week and we're hearing this another week. And it keeps changing. The goalposts keep moving around. One day we're hearing this and the next day we're hearing that. Oh, it's not that effective this way. Oh, it's very effective this other way. Hey, we're hearing all this. They even come out with a report this week and said, well, it's not really living on things as long as we originally thought it was. You mean to tell me you got the masses, you got the population, you got them, gen and it's not really living on things as long as you thought it was? Well, the New England uh, Journal of Medicine, uh, the person that they said uh, that was affecting people that didn't, uh, that, that we said didn't have any symptoms, actually had symptoms. What? You mean to tell me? It changes every day. We're hearing more stuff every day. And it got, it has this warning. Well, what is true? What is real? Well, I'll tell you what's true. The word of God. Amen. What is real? Jesus Christ. Amen. If you want strength today, you've got to look to the Lord. You're not going to find it with man. Colossians 3, 1, look at the Bible says. If ye then be risen with Christ. If ye then, are you a believer today? Does Jesus live in your heart today? Then look what God's word says. He says, seek those things which are above. Where Christ sits on the right hand of God, set your affections on things above, not on things of the earth. If you be risen with Christ, as in other words, if you're a believer today, your eyes, your attention, your focus needs to be on the things of God. Because if you put your eyes on the Lord, all that's happening out there is just little winds blowing. Just little winds blowing. Huh? It ain't affecting us. It ain't bothering us. It's just a little wind blowing. When you're looking at the things of God, you say, Preacher, you believe it. Don't you're saying it's not real. I didn't say it ain't real. I'm saying that our eyes and our attention need to be on the things of God. Let me ask you a question. Were the fiery flames real that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stepped into? Amen. But did they have any power over them? I'm waiting for the answer. Where's the power that they trusted in? In the Lord. Amen. Makes all the difference in the world, doesn't it? Amen. Now here's the deal. It's about to, turning your eyes upon him. Look, set your face on things above. Is this not God's word? Now y'all help me out. I mean, I don't want to preach anything that's not true. Am I not preaching the word of God this morning? So where does our attention need to be? It needs to be on the things of God. Read on with me. For you are dead and, and, and your life is hid in Christ, in, in, in Christ and God. He says, when Christ who is our life shall appear, then shall we, ye also appear with him in glory. He says, mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanliness, and, uh, and order and affection. That means the things they're doing today, it's not right. It's called sin. See, they're contrary to the things of God. And God says, don't be about those things. Be about my things. Amen. And when you turn your attention to the things of God, those things cease to matter. They cease to exist. Because we're not focusing on those things. We're focusing on his word. Look what he says. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanliness, and inordinate affection, evil consumptiousness, and covetousness, which is idolatry. You mean to tell me people go around worshiping things that is not God? Happens all the time. Happens all the time. God wants your eyes and your focus and your attention to be on him. You know why? Because there's safety there. Real safety. For which things sake the wrath of God come upon the children of disobedience and the which he also walks sometimes when you lived in them. It's where we used to be, Brother John. It's not where we need to be now. See, when God saves a person, he changes a person. So where should our eyes be? Well, Psalms 121. Psalms 121. I will lift up my eyes into the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. I'm going to look to God. I'm going to listen to what God's word has to say. Because there I'm going to find my help. There I'm going to see the things that I need. Verse number three says, he will not suffer thy foot to be, to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. 
The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon the right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from, the, from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and ever, or even forevermore. You see, when I turn my eyes to the things of God, I know who's got me. I know who's got me. It's the Lord. And I'm not worried about it. See, here's the deal. I won't be here one day longer than God wants me to be. But I'll be here just long enough for God to use me and utilize me as he wills. Here's the deal. You see, I know who I have believed in. I know where my help comes. I know where I need to keep my eyes focused today. Amen. You see, when I do so, it gives me the strength and the ability to overcome things in my life. That's what it does. It doesn't make me that I'm some better person than anybody else. No, 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 no. The only reason I am what I am is because of the grace of God. Except for the grace of God, there go I. So I'm not speaking with a haughty spirit this morning. I, I'm not puffed up with pride this morning. No, it ain't anything that I've done. It's everything he's done in me. And so today I rejoice over knowing where my help comes. And when I know that, Brother Tom, go with me to Ephesians chapter 3, if you will. Ephesians chapter 3, verse number 14. For this cause, I bow my knee unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me put it to you this way. There ain't no man, woman, boy, or girl I'm ever going to bow before. You heard me right. I'm not going to bow before any man, woman, boy, or girl. But the holy God of all creation, I will fall flat on my face before him without hesitation. I know where my allegiance lies. I know who has my existence. You know why Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were able to go into the fiery flames? Remember, it was about bowing. Y'all remember that? It's about bowing. King Nebuchadnezzar said, oh, I'm going to give you another chance at this, boys. If when you hear this, you hear this music, you bow, all will be okay. Oh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego says, oh, King, we're not careful to answer you in this matter. Meaning, we're not going to hesitate to tell you we ain't bowing. One way or the other, God's going to deliver us either in the flames or from the flames. It don't matter. Hey, God's going to deliver us. Now, we know they walked into the flames or they got thrown into the flames because they were bound with ropes. You know the only thing they lost into the flames? The ropes. You know what didn't get hurt? Nothing of their person. Their clothes, matter of fact, the clothes didn't even smell like smoke when it came out of there. Amen. Only God can do a thing like that. Amen. Only God can do a thing like that. And on the other side of that and everything, old Nebuchadnezzar changed his little tune. He started acknowledging there ain't no God but the God of the Shadrach, Meshach, Meshach and Abednego. Their God is the real God. Wow! Why? Because Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stood where they needed to. They determine, no matter what happens, no matter what they may throw at us, we're not going to bow. We're going to stand for God. I know everybody's heard that old country song. You got to stand for something or you fall for anything. <laughs> you know where he got that? He actually got that biblical truth from the Word of God. God's talking about standing here. And us as believers need to stand. And having done all, stand. Stand therefore with your loins girded about with truth. Boy, isn't that a concept that's kind of crazy today? We bring actual truth into a situation. Think about where our society would be today if at the front end of this thing they would have told us the truth. Hmm? Imagine that. Isn't that crazy to think that maybe those that are in places of authority ought to be able to tell us the truth? Instead of lying? And oh no. You see, we see so many lies. We see so many lies that we've gotten so comfortable living in lies. You know, the weatherman, he lies to you. It's going to be this, it's going to be that. No, he, he, he needs to tell you, look, I really don't know. It kind of looks like it may be this way. Huh? Come on now. <laughs> you know? You get uh, 
down there to the store and you see these bottles and they say, hey, you take these bottles and you look like this model over here. By the way, she hadn't had nothing to eat for days. I don't know about you, but I ain't going down that path. Amen. Come on now. Amen. Living with the lies. And if you take this pill, you'll be just like this model over here. I don't really want to be like her. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't want to be like her. Because I like to go to the table from time to time. I like to eat a little bit of food. Not starve my, myself from it. And by the way, they got this one stuff in, in, in all... Look, we used to bail it up for hay and give it to the cows. It's hay feed stuff, whatever, you know what? Uh-uh. You know what? I'll even take a big old bologna sandwich right there with the mater slapped right on it and, and be grateful for that. Say amen right there. But I am not going, sorry, I'm not going down that other path. Not going to. And I'm not trying to be rude or mean to look. They're, they're telling us that if we'll do this, we'll do that. This is what's the result. That's what the result is. I was sharing with them in Sunday school this morning about kudzu. How many of y'all know about kudzu? Kudzu, they brought into the United States of America from Japan. Kudzu, they told us that it was going to stop our erosion problem. What they didn't say is it would take over certain areas. And it has. You can go down through Mississippi, and there are certain areas that it's completely took over by kudzu. I'm here to tell you, stuff it grows and grows. It grows so fast, and it wipes out areas. It does. Oak trees are completely toppled by kudzu. Big old mighty oaks. Wow. But man wanted to solve a problem and created 50 more in the process. That's what they do. So are you going to trust that? You're going to rely upon that? You're going to depend upon that? Or are you going to look to the things of God? You see, I know I've lived long enough to experience the lives of mankind. I know. I understand. And you have too, if you'll be honest with yourself this morning. So what do we need? God says, stand there with truth. Stand there with truth. Let's look at some things this morning. You see, verse number two. Verse number two. Or, or excuse, excuse me, the second thing. Verse number 11. He says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand uh, or be able to stand against the, uh, the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness in high places. That means those that are over us. We're in a fight. We're in a fight. Verse 13. He says, Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand. Having done all, to stand. Stand. You know, this ain't about bowing to the circumstance and the situation of today. It's about standing for what's right. The reason why, Brother Alex, we're talking about those people from World War II. By the way, World War I doesn't need to be forgotten neither. Korean War doesn't need to be forgotten neither. Vietnam doesn't need to be forgotten neither. And by the way, they never were done right. Say amen right there. Amen. And all the other things that's been in between. We've had a lot of men and women serve this nation. Whether by truth or by lie. A lot of our men and women served this nation and everything, and they stood for that flag. They stood for that flag. I don't know a veteran today, they might be out there, Brother West, but I don't know a veteran today that would pass up that flag without first paying tribute to it. That's why that flag means so much. You don't let it touch the ground. You don't deface it. When one gets tattered at the flagpole, you bring it down. You fold it upright. And you give it to a veteran and let them dispose of it because they hold the right to do so. Amen. You don't burn it. You don't disgrace it. You uphold it. Be amazed at how many people 
would be good to study flag, flag etiquette, etiquette. Amen. I still hear in the national anthem. I may be in my office in there fixing to watch a crazy old football game if they're playing the national anthem. I'm not out in some crowd somewhere or another, Brother Carl, where everybody can see me. Doesn't really matter whether if I was or if I wasn't. When I start hearing old glory fly and I hear that old national anthem being played, Amen. 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 Because I respect and honor those that came before us. See, that's what we're doing when we stand. We're standing for the one that came before us. Or should I say standing for the one that stands before us. Jesus Christ standing on that hill of Golgotha. As John says, Jesus declared, Brother Alex, that if he'd be lifted up, and he was, he'd draw all men unto himself. You know what your job is to do when you stand? You're lifting Jesus up. Amen. We're his representatives. We're his ambassadors. We're standing to bring glory and honor to the name of God. I know, Brother Buck, they want to do away with it. I know they want to silence it. Hey, they've kicked him out of schools. they kicked him out of courthouses. they kicked him out of homes. But I'm here to tell you, he still stands. He still stands. I'm here to tell you, I'm going to stand for him. Having done all to stand, stand therefore. Verse 14 having your loins girded about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the, of the gospel of peace. Do you realize what we can change this world by doing? It's right there in the scriptures. By us standing like we need to. We show others the way. And the gospel of peace comes to the forefront. Real peace. As in other words, Brother Jack, when people accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, a peace moves within their hearts that passeth all understanding. No matter what the world throws at them anymore, has no bearing, has no weight. Because they realize and understand that when all this comes to an end, and it's coming to the end, only those that stand for the Lord, only those that stand for the Lord, only those that have Christ within their heart will be there with the Lord in the end. And having done all to stand, stand therefore. If you would this morning with me stand as you get to your knee, or get to your feet. What page, Brother John? 270. God's on your heart this morning. I don't know what the need is this morning. I know, don't know what God uh, is, is speaking to your heart about this morning, but there's an altar for you this morning. Why don't you come? If you're listening at home, if God's on your heart, why don't you bow your knee, or bow, bow, go to your knees and bow your head to God and ask God to guide you and direct you in the days in which we're living. I don't know what the need is, but God does. Let's pray. I pray, Lord, to speak to the hearts. Lord, be in this altar time as only you can. Help us to overcome. Help us to get the victory in the days in which we're living. Help us to be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Be determined to stand for God. That alone. Thank you, dear Lord, for this opportunity in Christ's name. Amen. All stand. Brother John, what page? Page 270. 270, let's say. Come on right now. Come on right now. Just as I am.
stepped out this morning. Maybe you're sitting there at home and you went to your knees. I don't know. Can't see. But I don't need to. It's not about me seeing anyhow. It's about what God does within the hearts. Maybe you're sitting there at home today and maybe you're sitting here in the house of God today. I don't know. But you're saying, preacher, these are difficult times. I understand. They are. But what about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Were they not difficult times then? What about, I don't know, let's say David. Were they not difficult times then? How about, oh, let's say, oh, I don't know. How about old Joseph? When he got accused of things and threatened with things, and if he didn't, do something other that was evil, he's going to get thrown in jail. He said, oh, I ain't going to do that. He ran out of the house. He got thrown in jail. But in the end of the story, he got moved all the way up to the palace. Got moved all the way up to the palace. Got placed right underneath the Pharaoh. And because of what Joseph did, he didn't only just save his people, he saved the world. Brothers and sisters, we need to realize that standing is such a valuable thing when we're standing for what's right. Standing is such a needful thing when we're standing for what's right. God says, having done all to stand, stand therefore with your loins girded about the truth. I'm glad that we had a Gideon who thought of himself very little. But God called him a great man of power. You know what he did? You guessed it. He stood for the Lord and got God the victory. You see, over and over and over, we read these stories out of the Old Testament. And the reason why we read these stories out of the Old Testament, it reminds us of people who stood and God gave the victory because they stood for what was right. How about old Moses over there? He could have went and been just another one of the people of Pharaoh's house. He could have neglected his people and went along with everything, but no. He decided and deciphered that what he would do was stand. And he did. And because of that, he was able to lead the people of God all the way out of Egypt. Brothers and sisters, we need people today to stand. And having done all to stand, stand therefore with your loins girded about the truth. That's what we need. Be amazed how that will change things. Just by standing and doing what's right. Amen. Let's be dismissed in prayer this morning. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate the opportunity and the time. Thank God for what God's given to us. Thank God for what God's allowed us. Amen. I'm very grateful. Good to see each and every one of you. Some of you we haven't seen you in a while. Good to see you. Welcome back. Good to have you. I pray it's been a blessing to you this morning. All the way in the back, Brother West. Good to see you back. Glad you made it back, Brother. If you will, dismiss us in prayer. Brother Paul, Lord, I want to thank you for this day. Lord, as we take the time to remember the men and women that have lost their lives for our freedom. Lord, we do want to praise you that you gave up your life for an our eternal life. Lord, we want to praise you and thank you in all that you do. We want to praise and thank you for your word. Lord, as we leave today, remind us to spend time in your word. Bring us back to the next point in time. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.